Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration of how to flush your vehicle's brake fluid using a pressure bleeder. This video is sponsored by ECS Tuning. They have provided me with the pressure bleeder, which is made by Schwaben, along with the required brake fluid for the vehicle. Links to these products will be included in the description below, so be sure to check them out. Here I am working with a 2007 Volvo C30. Start by opening the hood and locating your master cylinder reservoir. Use a clean rag to wipe the surrounding area of the cap to prevent any foreign contaminants from entering the reservoir. In order to determine which type of fluid is required for your vehicle, this can be printed on the top of the reservoir cap. You can also refer to your vehicle's owner's manual under the fluid type or capacity section. We also need to know the capacity requirement for the vehicle. You should have about a half a liter more of brake fluid for this vehicle which requires 0.6 liters. I have one liter which should be plenty. A quick preview showing the before and after of the fluid replacement. Here is a pressure bleeder kit which not only allows you to bleed or flush your brake fluid but also works with other vehicle fluids which I'll be saving for future videos. This tank can hold up to 3 liters of fluid and is pressurized using the pump on the top. The orange cap serves two purposes. One is the fill point and the other is a spring loaded valve to relieve the pressure. The pressure gauge allows us to keep an eye on the pressure to ensure there is no leaks or so we can see there is always pressure in the system. The kit comes with a generic type cap that can be used on any type of master cylinder reservoir or in this case we can use the cap which is a standardized style for European vehicles. And finally here is the feeder line. The black threaded fitting connects to the pressure bleeder and the other end which includes a valve and a quick disconnect attaches to the master cylinder cap. With the pressure bleeder this can be operated by one person, is typically the fastest compared to any other bleeding method and allows you to pressurize the system with minimal risk of air entering the system. Sometimes you can use a turkey baster or vacuum pump to remove a majority of the old fluid out of the reservoir. However, some of these reservoirs do have an irregular design or include baffles making this difficult. So we can skip this method. It may require slightly more fluid for removal at the first bleeder until we start seeing clean fluid. For this vehicle, I am using the supplied European style cap screwed into place and ensure it's tight. As another example, using the generic clamp on cap, again ensuring the reservoir is clean, put the top cap in place, it has a rubber base which allows it to compress and seal against the opening. Pull the chain around the bottom, loop it onto the hook, that hook should be backed off as far as possible and then tighten that hook. Screw that line onto the tank. This kit has a particularly great design as a tank side fitting allows for rotation therefore preventing the line from twisting. The quick disconnect side also allows for the same type of rotation as well. Ensure that valve is turned perpendicular to the line. This will mean it's turned off. Pump the system up to about 15 psi and monitor the gauge for a pressure drop. If there is a pressure drop, you have a leak and any connections would need to be inspected and tightened accordingly. Currently this allows us to check for any leaks between the valve of the line and pressure tank. Open the valve slowly. It should be parallel with the feeder line. You'll see the gauge drop about 1 psi and again monitor for any leaks. We can somewhat centralize a leak if there is one present. If the pressure drops here we have a pressure leak past the quick disconnect. Once you have verified there is no leaks, release the pressure by pressing the relief valve. Disconnect the line and then fill the tank. As mentioned earlier, the orange cap which has a pressure relief valve is also the fill point. The tank should have enough fluid so it doesn't run empty and risk the chance of introducing air into the system. The tank will have a full 1 liter of brake fluid. There is usually a specific maintenance interval for brake fluid and this information can be found in your vehicle's owner's manual. Some vehicles may require replacement at 30,000 kilometers. 20,000 miles or every two years. Other vehicles may have a longer maintenance interval such as 160,000 kilometers, 100,000 miles or every 10 years. 
Reinstall the cap, make sure it's hand tight, and then reinstall the feed line going directly to the vehicle. Pump the system up to 15 PSI. Pressure requirements may vary between vehicles. If you exceed a manufacturer's pressure limit, this may damage internal seals within the braking system. Monitor the gauge for a pressure drop, which would indicate a leak. If a pressure drop is present, it will need to be fixed. Some vehicles have different bleeding procedures, such as bleeding the closest wheel to the master cylinder, while others require the furthest wheel first, that tends to be the most common. For this vehicle, I'm starting with the furthest wheel. Jack up the vehicle. Sometimes you can take a quicker route just by accessing the rear of the wheel if you have a hoist or your vehicle has higher ground clearance. As a safety precaution, use a jack stand as well. This car has four wheel disc brakes, so we will be working with calipers on the rear. Locate the bleeder screw, which will be covered by a rubber cap. Clean off any dirt with a rag, remove the cap and clean again. For this vehicle, it has a 10 millimeter bleeder screw on the rear. Using the box end of the wrench, this will prevent any slippage and stripping the bleeder. You'll need a clear rubber line that fits tight on the bleeder screw to direct the old fluid into a container. Here I'm using a water bottle so you can see the fluid color. For drum brakes, typically the bleeder screw is found through the mounting plate where the wheel cylinder is located. Since we have that pressure bleeder already pressurized, loosen the bleeder and watch the fluid flow. The furthest wheel will be draining the most amount of fluid as it's the furthest distance. The pressurized reservoir pushes the old fluid through the system while topping up the clean fluid and not allowing air into the system. This water bottle holds 500 milliliters of fluid, so we should be looking at roughly 250 milliliters of fluid from this wheel, including the reservoir. If you remove more, this is fine. This just means the system is thoroughly flushed. Wait until clean fluid is present in the clear rubber line, then tighten the bleeder and remove the line. Be extremely careful with brake fluid as it can damage paint. The furthest wheel will require about 40% of fluid extraction. This does vary between vehicles and is just a rough estimate. Reinstall the wheel and move on to the next furthest wheel, which is the driver's side rear. Again, using the same procedure, jack up the vehicle, remove the wheel and use a jack stand. Locate the bleeder screw, remove the cap, install the box into the wrench, and then install the rubber line. If you find the fluid comes slow out of the bleeder, this could be either from a dirty hole in the bleeder or simply just the design. Brake fluid is hygroscopic, meaning it's able to absorb moisture which is present in the air, either through leaks, seals, or even when the cap is off the reservoir. Each type of brake fluid has a different boiling point rating, and each is affected differently based on the moisture content. As an example, DOT 3 brake fluid has a boiling point of just over 400 degrees Fahrenheit, but this varies between manufacturers. If moisture content is measured at 3%, this drops the boiling point down to about the dot minimum requirement of 284 degrees Fahrenheit. Furthermore, brake fluids also have additives to prevent corrosion, foaming, viscosity stabilizers, acid neutralizers, etc. that ensures your braking system has a long life. Heat can break down the fluid, including these additives which will cause poor braking performance and even premature failure of components. Old fluid can also cause a spongy brake pedal and increase the chance of brake fade under heavier braking. Once clean fluid is present in the hose, tighten the bleeder. This time around, roughly 30% of fluid will have been removed from the total system's capacity. Reinstall the wheel, and now we're moving on to the second last wheel. This time, it's the front passenger side. As you get closer to the master cylinder, less fluid will need to be removed as the lines are shorter. It's important to periodically check the pressure bleeder's gauge so the pressure rating doesn't drop at a low value, otherwise we do risk introducing air into the system. Personally, I prefer to keep the pressure between 10 to 15 PSI. For each wheel, you may see a pressure drop of about 2 PSI at the very most with the furthest wheel. As you get closer to the master cylinder, the pressure drop will become less. The front bleeder screws on the calipers are a different size on this vehicle, so we will need a 9mm wrench instead. Install the wrench, then the rubber hose, and ensure you have a catch container or a bottle in place. 
Crack the bleeder and drain the fluid until clean fluid is present in the line. Tighten the bleeder, remove the hose. Again, be careful not to get brake fluid on the paint. I normally like to wipe away any residue from the bleeder. This can help spot a leak if it occurs. Here, roughly 20% of the brake fluid should be removed from the total system's capacity. Reinstall the dust cap. If the dust caps are missing or damaged, they should be replaced. Reinstall the wheel, and finally, we're on to the last wheel. This time around, considering it's the shortest, I'll speed up the video slightly so you can see the full process along with the color change between the old and new fluid. If dust caps are stuck in place, try to rotate them slightly to help break them free. Use a rag to clean up any debris around the bleeder screw. Install the wrench and then the clear rubber line along with the catch bottle. Crack that bleeder and watch the fluid flow. This caliper, considering it's the closest to the reservoir, will require the least amount of fluid to be drained, so roughly 10% of the entire system. Eventually, you'll see new clean fluid present in the line. The bleeder can be tightened then. Remove the line and wrench. Wipe off any residue at the bleeder, then reinstall the cap. And finally reinstall the wheel. Once done, there will be about 100 milliliters of fluid remaining in the pressure bleeder. Release the pressure by pressing the relief valve. Towards the end of the pressure, I also gave a line a light jiggle to remove any fluid which may drip once that line is removed. It's important to always have more fluid in the pressure bleeder as we don't risk the chance of this running dry and introducing air into the system. Close off the valve and then disconnect the line at the reservoir cap. Do not leave the reservoir cap off for too long. As mentioned earlier, brake fluid will absorb moisture. Clean off the cap to remove any contaminants, inspect the seal, if it's damaged replace as necessary, and then reinstall the cap. The pressure bleeder does an excellent job of maintaining the level of fluid in the reservoir. As you can see, we are between the minimum and maximum markings. If there is too much fluid, then you will need to remove this using a turkey baster or vacuum pump. If fluid is too low, then add accordingly. Start the vehicle and check the pedal feel. We should have a firm pedal feel with no sponginess. If you have a spongy pedal, then air may be present in the system and the procedure will need to be repeated to remove the air. And here's a comparison between the old and new fluid. As you can see, the old fluid on the right is slightly darker in color and somewhat murky. When I purchased this vehicle, no maintenance history was available, so it's hard to say when the fluid was last replaced. As for testing the moisture content in brake fluid, I do have a video on that, so be sure to check it out. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit the thumbs up. It's a huge help to me. Don't forget to leave a comment below letting me know what you think of my tutorial. If you're not a subscriber, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.